Shitrit is one of Israel's most well-known politicians. He's served in parliament and in government roles since 1981, including as Minister of Finance, Justice Minister, and Minister of Education. Shitrit began his political career in the Likud party and in 2005 left and joined late Prime Minister Ariel Sharon's centrist Kadima party and in the most recent 2013 elections joined Tsipi Livni's Hatnu'a party. After more than 40 years, Shitrit will retire from public service and he's joining me tonight here in the studio. Good evening, thank you very much Good evening, for coming. Uh, first of all, it's a great honor and it's always good to have you here in uh, the studio. And I think that one of the, the bad, uh, um, let's say, um, when, when I heard that you're leaving the political uh, arena for me, I really felt sad that day because I felt that something in the basis of Israel and something from what I grew up on and the moral that I grew up on and the values that I grew up on are leaving the political arena and unfortunately I don't see it a lot right now. I'm not leaving gladly the political system. I love, I love the political work. I love the public work. I did it all my life since the age of 24. And I'm really living in some kind of sadness, but uh, the circumstances had been created by the agreement that Mrs. Livni did with the Labour Party. It bring me and not me alone, another three other members of the party, which means four of six, we retired. We decided to leave because we don't find, we don't want to find ourselves in the last rows of the Labour Party in the Knesset. And we decided to leave and step aside, <coughs> hoping that we see what, uh, what they will do. It doesn't say that it is the end of my political career. Maybe I'm not taking uh, out of uh, possibility that in the future I may come back in the future because I love this uh, public work and I love the political. Political. I believe that this is the place in which you can make a uh, really change in the life of people for a better life. And uh, that's what I did the most of my life. Uh, when I see what's going on in this election from a side and not involved totally in the election, I'm, uh, it, if it was not my country, I would laugh because really, I don't understand the leaders of the parties, which, as a matter of fact, instead of trying to elect what they have the right today, most of the parties are electing themselves personally, everyone they want to be in the Knesset. And they, instead of electing people who have experience, a record, previous day, elect new people, reporters, uh, football Ladies. players, all kinds of celebrities trying to make the people laugh. Maybe they will vote for them. That's crazy. How, they, how you, these people should tomorrow manage the problems of the state of Israel? You know, from, you, from previous campaigns that you took part in, do you remember, because I have the feeling that uh, the leaders or the, the candidates are making fun of us, of the citizens of Israel. They are disrespecting our intelligence. They are disrespecting us by thinking that if they will make us laugh about the situation, they will make us forget that the situation in Israel is not that good. I, I totally agree with you. I, I think you are looking very rightly to the situation. I, I expect I have been so many times in uh, campaigns and in the same parties. I've been in Dilkud, I've been in Kadima, in the place. I, my point of view is when you want to make a campaign, you have to convince the people why they should elect you. What are you going to do on the next term when you will be elected? What are you going to do in education? What are you going to do for housing? What are you going to do for the peace in the future? Instead of that, you say they are creating jokes. It, therefore, I said, if it was not my country, I would be, I would be laugh. But I think I'm sad because the situation is deteriorating all the time. Through this behavior, when you come only to celebrities, it's became to me like what they call the big brother in television. Yes, game. reality show. It's a reality show, it became like a reality show. That's crazy. The situations and the problems which stand on the table are so serious that really it is, it is this uh, honoring the intelligence of people so by you, using this way of uh, campaigning. So, you know, Mr. Shitrich, from what you're saying, and I cannot uh, help it but, but thinking that. Uh, maybe there is no big difference between Benjamin Netanyahu and Isaac Herzog. Maybe there is no big difference between the, the Zionist camp and the Likud party. Maybe at the end of the day, 
both of them, all the, the only thing that they care about is actually to be yeah. in politics, but not to actually act in politics. Yeah, I agree with you. There is differences in the ideology of both sides. But the problem, as you said, then what they can do? Are they going to really to implement it? I don't see the chances that they can implement it. Is there a difference in the ideologies? Is yes. there? Because if at the end of the day, uh, all the, um, let's say, uh, predictions that uh, maybe they will end up together, maybe they will end up with a unity but, government, <laughs> is there a real difference between the ideology of T.P. Livni and the ideology of Isaac Herzog and the ideology, or maybe the lack of ideology of Benjamin Netanyahu? There is a difference in the ideology. But you say the problem is if the idea is only how to survive and to be in government, then the ideology doesn't make a difference. The ideology is there. Nobody can ignore it. Netanyahu do not agree today, for example, to make concessions toward the Palestinian people in order to make peace. While the Labour Party and the Zionist uh, Party believe in peace and willing to make concessions toward the Palestinians. The problem is, can they do it? I don't think they can. That is the reason why I believe that maybe we arrive at a situation that the politics of Israel is dead we need to make a big change in order really to change the situation, which is to transfer the election system to be by personal election by constituencies. And this you're saying after you, uh, you've been in three different, um, three different parties, yes. and because you've been in three different parties, you're basically saying that you didn't and find your place, or I'm, maybe the I'm, place that you were in before is not the same, or lost the I'm, ideology that you're talking I, about? I, I, I never was afraid to express my opinions and to support the way I believe. It doesn't matter where I've been. When I was a member of the Likud, I'm the only one who supported the slow agreement against the discipline of my party. Because that's what I believe. And I wanted the people to understand it. Therefore, I didn't hide it. The Likud members knew the time for Palestinian state. I'm the first politician in Israel who say that the, publicly that the only solution for peace with the Palestinians will be establishing a Palestinian state. I said it when I was the head of the coalition government of Netanyahu. And the only one who said it after you was Benjamin Netanyahu. If we're yeah. looking at the Likud members today, no one is even no willing one. to say two-state solution. No one. There, but there is some kind of hope. There is a paradox in Israel that I call it the hoax of peace and the dose of war. Only hoax can make peace with national consensus. So if Netanyahu will be prime minister and make a decision to make peace, that will pass automatically in large uh, votes in the Knesset, and the public. If the left will make peace, the chances to pass it in the Knesset will be very poor. That's the reason why we need, at the time, we needed begging to make peace with Egypt. Nobody else can do it. Nobody will dare to leave all Sinai and uproot all the settlements from everywhere in order to make peace with Egypt. Begging could, so because it came from the right. Benjamin Netanyahu what I'm is saying is scared. Is yeah, he make, he didn't make his mind up. If really will, he will make his mind up as a right-wing person and make peace, decide to make peace seriously and make concessions, he can success do it easily. Most of the people in Israel will support it. What is preventing him? I think it's his own, his own private... Uh, personality? personality? Is it a personality yeah. thing or is it a... When, when somebody became prime minister, I believe that he should not make any games. He should not think what's going to be tomorrow. Should I stay prime minister or not? He should do what exactly needed for the state, which is uh, cheering. Otherwise, he's not fully fulfill his own task. That's the reason why Begin didn't afraid to go to this direction. Even he knew that will be a big rejection in the record, and I've been there. So Begin did it because he was a statesman. That's why Sharon, which was a very, very right-wing man, who make all most of the settlements and make a lot of problems everywhere, when he became prime minister, he changed his mind and disengaged from Gaza. And he wanted to make a peace process. Netanyahu did not change still his own, uh, his own attitude to peace. You know, but I if he will do it, it creates some kind of hope. But yeah. without, look, every Knesset I've been, there is no one that I didn't try to pass a law to change the system of election to personal constituencies. And I'm sorry to say, I didn't succeed. Most of the parties today are objecting Maybe it. Maybe you will still uh, be successful in the future. And you, su hope. you were successful in so. many, many other things. Mr. Thank Mayor Sheetrich, maybe sometimes the chair of the prime minister is really, really comfortable. I, I but try. this is. I try twice. <laughs> yes, uh, Mr. Sheetrich, thank you very much for coming thank you. to the studio. And thank you, our viewers, for being with us tonight. Tomorrow we will be here at the same time, same place for the Jeff Report, Israel. Have a great night.